So today I want to talk about how to build a medical technology startup and why that's important. So first of all, let's start from the beginning, right? I met my co-founder Sven at Entrepreneur First. So Entrepreneur First is a startup program in London that brings together people from all different backgrounds and supports them in building tech companies. So Sven and I met there, and we decided we wanted to do something really valuable, something truly useful for people. Not just some random little startup, not some optimizing some little tiny thing, but something that really has an impact on society. And so medical technology clearly would be in that space. But it's very difficult because we're not really medics, we have zero medical background, and we knew almost nothing about the space. Meanwhile, we started our company. That's Think Sono. And, um, just a tiny little bit about what we did. We were creating software to diagnose a deadly condition called deep vein thrombosis. Now, behind me, you'll see some ultrasound images in our software analyzing it. Don't worry about the details. But what it's trying to do is detect this condition. Now, for context, DVT is a blood clot in the deep veins of the leg. And if part of that clot breaks loose, it goes up to your lung and can cause something called a pulmonary embolism. And that can lead to death. In fact, 800,000 people die a year due to this condition or its related conditions. That's more people than breast cancer, prostate cancer, AIDS, and car accidents combined. And so what we wanted to do was, well, what we're doing, I suppose, is creating software to help uh, non-specialists such as nurses, junior doctors, general practitioners to diagnose this condition with the same accuracy as a radiologist, as a specialist. But the question is, why start a medtech company in the first place? I think there are lots of different reasons. I mean, I mentioned why we decided to start one. We wanted to help people. And so maybe people start medtech companies because they want to help people. A second reason would be you want to get rich, which I think, you know, there are easier ways to get rich than starting medtech companies, to be honest with you. But that is a fair point. You can get rich. Maybe it's a mixture of the two. You want to help people and get rich at the same time, right? Or perhaps you're just crazy. I mean, we were. We, had, we didn't even know the problem existed before we started the company, so it's pretty crazy. The point I'm trying to make, actually, it doesn't really matter why you want to start a medtech company. What matters is that you do. Because clearly, healthcare is a huge priority for both the individual and society in general. I mean, just think about your parents going to hospital, or if you go to hospital, how important is the technology there? Extremely important. It's life-saving. So, but the sadness of it all is that I see a lot of potential healthcare entrepreneurs shy away, shying away from this space because of its perceived difficulty. Investors get worried about investing in medtech because they're worried that it's too risky, it takes too long. And you know, that's fair enough, because there's even a term for it. There is some data to support this. It's called the medtech value of death. And you know, it's a bit of a morbid term, I know. But on the one side, you see you know, startups and investors throwing money and resources at this value of death. Meanwhile, the healthcare system is on the other side. And everyone loses out. The entrepreneurs, the investors backing the entrepreneurs, the healthcare system, and most importantly, the patients. That's you and me, right? Because new innovations that, that can improve your life, or perhaps save your life, can't be introduced to the healthcare system. Now, I don't think it has to be this way. I, I think with a few hints and suggestions, we can perhaps move past this medtech value of death and, and introduce our innovations to the healthcare system. So how do we avoid the medtech value of death? Well, I think there's a few things you can think about. The first thing is, think big. I see lots of entrepreneurs who want to start medtech companies, and they, they want to solve marginal problems. Let me give you an example. If you're trying to cure cancer, you have technology that can cure cancer, or, or Alzheimer's disease. Compare that to something like optimizing patient note-taking to speed up the process. Now, don't get me wrong, I know lots of startups do this. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm sure there's lots of money involved as well. You know, but we're not really talking about groundbreaking technology now. And if you're going to dedicate the next five to 10 years of your life building something, you might as well make it worth building. And even if it's risky and it might fail, well, at least you've been trying to build something that's, that's, that, that inspires other people and that inspires you as well. 
Because I think it's actually the other way around. I think if you think big, you're more likely to pass the MedTech Valley of Death. Because when you inspire other people, they want to help you. And it makes you less likely to, to fail. OK, what's the second point then? Well, the second point is actually identify a problem. You know, So find a problem in MedTech, whether it's Alzheimer's disease or optimizing patient notes, that's fine. Just identify a problem first. And then what do you do next? You double check you actually understand the problem. Let me give an example. So when we, when we looked into DVT, we read every piece of research we could find. In fact, I told Sven, read all these eight research papers. He'd never read a medical research paper as far as I know, and he just read all of them, just to find out more about the condition and the things surrounding it. So we thought, you know, we understand the problem. You know what we did then? We triple checked that we understood the problem. In fact, we went to doctors and spoke to them and tried to bias them the other way. So we tried to say, you know what? DVT isn't really a problem, is it? And then we'd get resistance and then see if they actually push back on our comments about DVT. You know, maybe it doesn't cost, uh, cost very much. Maybe it's really fast uh, to process DVT patients. So that's what we did. We read every piece of research we could find that opposes our, our initial assumptions. And the reason I'm emphasizing understanding the problem so much is because it might seem obvious, but your entire business is going to be based on this foundational assumption that you actually understand the problem you're solving. OK, fair enough. So let's say you've actually done all this work and you've understood the problem. OK? Presumably, you have a solution to solve this problem. That's what you're offering. So you really need to check that the solution can solve the actual problem you identified. You might hate me a little bit, but check that the solution can, in fact, solve the problem you identified. In fact, now you might be bored because go back and check again that for sure your solution can, can definitely solve the problem you've identified, right? Really check that the solution can do it. And let me give you another story of why I think this is so important from personal experience, right? So initially with DVT, we currently try to do it, solve it with software, but because I'm a hardware engineer, and my co-founder is a software engineer, and of course, I'm slightly rude, and I decide what happens and stuff, and he's much nicer than me. I decided we have to build a hardware product to solve it. We were going to use lasers and shine light on the leg and stuff, and that's how we're going to detect it. And we went to spoke to professors, we went to laser companies, and we completely and utterly failed because it's actually not possible to solve this problem in this particular way. Then we stopped, almost gave up, reassessed, and, and thought about, what, if we're just neutral about what the solution is, maybe we can really solve the problem. And then we found out that actually software and image processing is a much better solution to this problem, which is what we're doing now. In fact, it doesn't necessarily even have to be a software solution. You have to be so neutral as to wonder whether or not, for example, DVT patients uh, don't even need a tech solution. You just need to raise awareness for the problem. Maybe it's a regulatory problem, or, or it's a finance issue. I don't think it's the case in, in our particular problem, but it can be the case in many other problems. And I think that's another common pitfall that many would-be medtech entrepreneurs fail at because they haven't picked the right solution. Okay, so let's say you've picked the problem, you've triple-checked it, and you know your solution's correct. Now what? Final point. Check that the solution's cost-effective. Now, that sounds a little bit boring for an audience who's not trying to build medtech companies, perhaps, although I hope you do. But the, the reason I'm saying you should check your solution, let's say you manage to somehow discover the cure for cancer. You take six pills, and then you have the cure for cancer. You, you don't need to do anything, any cancer. Well, if each pill costs a million euros, the healthcare system can't afford it anyway. We throw so much money at the healthcare system, a large chunk of entire country's GDP is just based on the healthcare system. And they really don't have enough um, resources to pick the best possible solution. They have to be cost effective. In fact, there are already drugs in the market that are better than the ones being used because the healthcare system can't afford the, the, the best possible drugs. Finally, so you've identified your problem, you've got the solution, you've checked it's cost effective. Now what do you do? Now you need to be confident and you need to build your team. You don't need to worry about credentials, whether you're a medic or not, that doesn't matter. You don't need to worry about what the professors think because you should have already built your entire business purely on the facts and on, on the research instead of your opinion or mine or someone else's. That's not to say you shouldn't take other people's opinions seriously, you should, 
but just look for the facts in their opinions. And that includes investors, because when you start raising money, they'll say a lot of stuff, so you don't need to worry about that. But just base it on facts. Every, every single opinion that people give, make sure it's factual. Okay, so I want to leave you with, with something quite simple, which I think everyone can relate to, which is I want you to solve really, really tough problems. Because in reality, those are the problems I think that are worth solving. Thank you very much.